Hey guys, Ethan here from Sportitude and I'm really excited today to bring you a review and comparison of the brand new Invincible Flyknit 3 from Nike. We've loved getting out and about in the Invincible 2, so we're really, really excited to bring you a review on this shoe in the Invincible 3. Now, to kick off, as we always do, we're gonna talk about the foot type that'll best be suited to this shoe. And I found for this one, a neutral foot type is gonna work best in this shoe because the shoe is so soft and so cushioned. If you're someone who tends to overpronate or supinate, you can tend to fall off a bit of a cliff because it is so soft on those edges. So if you're on the lateral side as a supinator, you can find yourself after a little while getting really tired and sore in that area because it is so soft and you're putting a lot of pressure on there. Same for the medial side for your overpronators. Now, to work this into my rotation, I definitely have it as my easy day and recovery day shoe. Um, for this version, compared to the version two, it's a little bit firmer through the forefoot, so I find it moving slightly more out of that recovery day zone, whereas you still could absolutely use it for that, but it is a little bit more responsive, so if you're using it for an easy day, or even a long run where you pick up a little bit, you can still use it for that. Now, as we always do, as we dive into the nitty gritty details, what's changed, what's different, what are we excited for? We'll start with the upper and work our way through the shoe. So starting at the back with the heel counter, probably one of the most obvious things is this heel clip at the back here. It's a lower profile, but it wraps further around the heel. Whereas previously it's come up a little bit, it's been a little bit wider, um, but with the new shoe, when they are adding more stack height, you're gonna get a more refined upper to hopefully save weight. And that's what they've done here. With the lower profile heel clip, it still wraps around further to give you that stability, but they're just saving a bit of weight by shaving down on the height and thickness of it. The other thing we'll get in the heel counter is a pull tab now as well, just to get it on a little bit quicker. You can pull it on your foot, um, makes it a little bit easier to get the shoe on your foot. Still got that nice padded heel counter and ankle collar as well, but they've done away with the padding on the outside here. Moving forward, still got a very similar lacing system. They've lost the gusseted tongue, so it's not gusseted anymore as it was in the previous version. In our testing, in our running, we haven't noticed it to move around too much on the foot. Still getting great lockdown, uh, especially for an easy day shoe. You're not really gonna be taking any corners too hard. You won't be going too crazy in this shoe. So they've lost it, probably just to save a bit of weight as well. Now, it is still a fly knit upper, but it is very different feeling to previous models. Where it's felt quite plush and soft, it's moved to a bit more of a lightweight, uh, more snug fit as well. So it fits pretty snug through the midfoot and the forefoot, not quite as much volume, probably not quite as accommodating as it has been previously, but if your foot works in this shoe, it's still really comfortable. Now, moving on to the outsole, there's a few slight changes, but nothing too crazy. Because they've gone a little bit firmer in the midsole, you get a little bit more of a disconnected outsole through here. Still feels like the same rubber, still feels like the same density. They've just tweaked it a little bit to give it a little bit more flexibility through that midfoot and through the toe off as well. Also, a little bit more outsole rubber on that medial side, uh, probably just adds to the stability. Uh, and they've also saved a bit of weight here just by cutting that out as well through the midfoot. Now, moving on to the midsole, still a fairly similar shoe with a few slight tweaks. Previously, we had 37 and 28 stack height for a nine mil offset, whereas now we're at 40 and 31, still keeping that nine mils. Now, they've gone a little bit firmer in the midsole, uh, which makes it a little bit more stable, and they've also changed the geometry a little bit to keep it stable as well. They've gone wider in the forefoot and the heel, just gives you more surface area, a bit of a wider platform to stay on top of. They've also added some medial and lateral cutouts to aid compression, because obviously when you go firmer, it adds stability, but you still wanna keep that plush, cushioned feeling underfoot. So by adding these cutouts, it allows the shoe to compress through the cutouts as you move through your gait, Keep you feeling cushioned and comfortable. Now, my thoughts after running around in this shoe for a little bit, if you're someone who has enjoyed the Invincible 1 and the Invincible 2, don't go into the Invincible 3 expecting the same thing again. Because they were so, so soft previously, if they kept getting softer and higher stack, we're gonna be sacrificing stability. So in the Invincible 3, they've gone on a bit of a different route. They've firmed it up a bit uh, and they've made it more stable. So if you're someone who hasn't gotten along with the Invincible 2 or Invincible 1, like myself, it's definitely a good opportunity to try the Invincible 3 and see what you think. I find for myself, still fits a bit too narrow to really accommodate my foot type, 
But if you're someone who has a narrow foot and you're really wanting to give the Invincible series a try, haven't gotten along with the super, super soft foam, uh, but still wanna get a recovery day and easy day shoe, I definitely recommend giving this a try. If you're someone who thinks you'll fit in it, you'll work well with it. Uh, if you prefer a slightly firmer ride, this is a really good opportunity for you to give it a whirl. Now, with all that said, if you're looking for an easy day and a recovery day shoe, it's a pretty niche market. There's not too much out there that will really fill the gap in your rotation. The shoe that I think is most similar to the Invincible 3 would be the New Balance Fresh Foam More version 4. It's a max stack. It's really, really soft and great for those easy and recovery days. So if you're looking to fill that spot, definitely give the Invincible 3 a try or the New Balance More V4. So wrapping up the Invincible 3, it is quite a different shoe from the Invincible 2. It's a great opportunity to give the Invincible line a try if you haven't gotten along with it very well previously. Just with that extra firmness and stability, it will be quite different. So definitely worth trying out if you haven't before, or if you're someone who's loved the Invincible 2, could be a good opportunity to try this one, see if you like it, or potentially try something else on the market as well. Now, if you wanna see any of our other reviews, make sure you subscribe to stay notified. Like, comment. If you've got any questions, comments, or theories, drop them below as well. I've been Ethan, you've been you, and thanks for watching. We'll see you out there.